Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited to talk to you today. We're gonna share how Rubato learns. As you know, digital marketing can be very exhilarating, it's very fast paced, everything's changing all the time, but that can also cause a lot of frustration, a lot of uh, you know not knowing, and this lack of confidence if you're really doing it the best way that you could be. So I'm gonna share Rubato's short list of about six main categories of how we are gathering information, where we're gathering information, how we're sharing that amongst our team. If there's anything that you follow uh, yourself that you're wondering if it's a good resource or not, please just shoot it over to me. I'm happy to share my professional opinion about that for what that's worth. And if there's anything that you would like for me to expound upon that I chat about today, I'm happy to do that. Just shoot me a DM. So here we go, diving into the six main categories that we, we follow. The first category is podcasts. It's my personal favorite because I can just stick my headphones in and go for a run and crush a podcast on 1.5x in 20 minutes, boom, uh, learning a lot of stuff. So there's two that I personally follow religiously. Actually, a client back in the day was the one who recommended both for me, and that is e-commerce influence and perpetual traffic. E-commerce influence has a mix of digital marketing uh, trends. There's two guys that run it. One is more Facebook focused, one is more email focused, and they also had their own pay group called The Coalition. We're not a part of this, we probably should be, <laughs> but this uh, perpetual traffic is put on by Digital Marketer. And back in the day, it had Molly Pittman and then uh, Ralph Burns. Ralph Burns is the owner of Tier 11, which is another agency uh, that does a ton of Facebook. They run like $100 million a year of paid ads, so they're super smart guys. And those are my two favorite. There's a new one on my radar called the e-commerce playbook. And to be honest with you, I don't even know the name of the guy that runs it. I just was introduced to it last week. I'd heard of it before, but I listened to a couple of episodes and super on point information. So I recommend that you check that out. And then the last one is something that I don't my, personally listen to myself, but a couple of guys on my team do and they're letting us know weekly all of the updates, and that's the paid search podcast. So there's a couple of guys that are running that that are just super on point with search and with Google updates, and that's been really key for us to stay on top of trends with Google. So those are the four favorites. If you have some uh, that you know of that are awesome, that are similar, please share with us because we love, love, love podcasts. <laughs> Number two is learning events and materials. This is super broad, so I'm gonna talk more about our process than what we actually do. So this includes trade shows, it includes books, it includes webinars, trainings, and courses. So this is very, very broad. And the way that we go about this is when we have a trusted source, like let's say we're listening to Perpetual Traffic, the podcast, and then they recommend a book or they recommend a trade show, then we go. Uh, or we read it. And then in the book, sometimes they'll recommend another book or you know, at the trade show, then there'll be five guys that are all recommending books or resources. So as you start learning and you start following people and you start getting a couple of core resources, your spider web of resources starts going out and you can trust that, that initial source. So this is a huge one for us. If you're, if you're interested in us sharing more information about the exact uh, you know, books that we're reading, or um, sometimes we post this on our Instagram, but also you know, the trade shows we're going to, we'd be happy to always just keep you in the loop if you wanna DM us on that one. Number three and four really go together. Number three is people. And number four is creating the right environment for learning. So number three with people, this is so, so important. We have connections to all of our clients, uh, you know, weekly touch points where on Slack and they each uh, have teams of people as well, and they're learning, they're listening to things, they're reading things, they're consuming information, and they're also testing things on the business side that you know we aren't necessarily always privy to uh, on the front end. So it's we are constantly asking questions, we're constantly digging in, trying to learn from that side, and then our team, they are also out there in ways that, for example, me, myself, I don't have time to consume all the possible information. So for each and every person to have that attitude has been really important for us. And that leads me to number four, which is creating the space and time to share the information and to show appreciation for that. One of the things that we do is called Rubato Inspiration, and it's a monthly chat where uh, one teammate is basically presenting to the whole team about what's inspiring them. And it doesn't even have to be 
be super business related. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but uh, that's been great for us. And then we also have some Slack channels that are set up just for learning. So we have like Google forum, Facebook forum, reporting forum, and those chats are pinging several times a week by people just who have seen an article um, or have, you know, read something or have researched something that, you know, we think is interesting. Most recently yesterday, it was blowing up about Instagram reels and uh, you know, how we can run that on a paid media aspect. And I had some information and our head of clients had other information. So we were putting it together there. That has been huge. So that's number four is just creating that space and time and those processes kind of, you know, even if it's just a Slack chat or something or a channel rather, um, where, where the team can share that information that they're, they're each gathering. Number five is blogs. To be honest with you, I'm not reading a lot. I don't have time to be on my phone really reading. I'm more of an audiobook type of person. But sometimes there are excellent articles. I just found one today by SEM Rush that uh, was talking about some Google audiences and some specific ways they were using that. So that is uh, one way that, you know, occasionally, and I think more so for my team that, you know, there's certain blogs that they're following. I also like Ad Espresso, for example, uh, maybe more back in the day to be honest. To be honest with you, I haven't really seen much from them recently. Maybe that's just me not really following it. But, you know, there's a few blogs out there that they really go into depth about how to use certain things. And they're good training materials sometimes, too, for the team. Uh, you know, there's blogs that really go through every single step. So rather than you having to uh, depict every single bit of information to your team, you can, you know, send them one of these blog articles. So that's something that we use. And then number six is just social media. And once you're really connected, you know, you, you listen to the podcast, you follow them on Instagram, and then you, uh, you know, read some of the books that they mentioned, and then maybe some of those authors you want to follow. And there's, there's this kind of weave that happens. And, um, you know, also on LinkedIn, as you connect to uh, more and more people in the business world, and you get more and more connections there, people are posting their interesting information. So that's something that's been very fascinating. There's been a couple of times that honestly, shame on me, I learned things from people posting, uh, for example, like a new feature on Google that I didn't even know about, which, you know, I probably should have, but somebody else beat me to the punch of, of knowing that something was coming. So that's just important. It's kind of a catch all, you know, if you, if you haven't had time to really catch up, uh, you know, the super fast moving industry, uh, for a day or two and something drops, that's an excellent way just to scroll through LinkedIn for, you know, 20 minutes to see if there's anything there based on the people that you're following. So those are the six main categories. Please let me know if there's anything that we can expound upon and we will see you next week here.